Hey there, folks. I just want to let you know that this story is part of a series. Uh, there's four parts to it. This is the prologue, and there's three more to follow. So I'm going to put it in a playlist. That way you can easily track it and get each one as they're available. Thank you very much. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and you know all that stuff, comment and all that. But uh, also some good news, quickly. Uh, doctor says everything's looking good on my throat. The scar tissue's healing. It's all stretching up. And <clears throat> he said whatever I'm doing, it is certainly helping. So not only am I having a ball, it's great therapy. So thank you once again. And, uh, well, let's go ahead and get along with the story, shall we? With hours left of 1999, it felt like the entire world held its breath waiting for the world to come crashing down because of a computer bug. I was convinced that I was not going to live to see the new year and wished it was for the same reason that the rest of the world was worrying about. On that night, I found myself in a dimly lit warehouse, tied to a chair, desperately trying to get out of this situation alive. My father was a no-good son of a bitch that brought down everyone who he had ever came into contact with. I was glad to be away from him the moment I was able. The only good thing he had ever gave me was a bit of advice that kept me alive during my adult life. It doesn't matter if you have jack shit. You just need to convince people you have something they need. And that's exactly what I did. I conned people into thinking I was the right person for the job, faking skills to get paid until I either learned the skill, got bored of the job, or moved on, or got caught and fired. Soon, I found myself not able to get respectable work that paid enough to keep me living. Slowly, I started doing more and more jobs on the wrong side of the law. I was creeping down a dangerous slide and I didn't notice how far down I had gotten until I hit rock bottom. I was running too many plans, too many promises to too many people, and it would only take one slip up for me to land in boiling hot water and it finally happened. I was jumped while walking to a bar, beaten and blindfolded. The long trip spent in the trunk of a car, unable to get free. I tried sweet-talking my captors, giving them more promises I swore I could keep, until I was forced into a rough wooden chair and strapped down. The moment the blindfold came off, I knew I wasn't going to leave this building in one piece. I have many bosses, but the man before me was the toughest and meanest of the bunch. My sweet-talking skills may have gotten me the job at first, but was not good enough of a skill to get me out of the mess I was in. I owed him money I didn't have, and that was it. That was all the facts. I should accept it. I just couldn't. I needed to believe in a good outcome, or else I really had no chance. No matter what I promised and said in my sweetest of tones, I was still worked over. I was alive, so he must have thought I had something of worth. I feared what would happen when he found out that I had no one I could sell out. No hidden money and just a crappy car to my name. I didn't even own a fridge. If I ever moved out of my apartment, it would stay with my penny-pinching landlord. The only way he could make any money off of me was to sell my organs. My blood type was rare universal kind that meant anyone could use it for transfusions. In my darker times, I sowed my blood to get by. That's how I knew. I wondered if that meant my organs could be used by more people and therefore be worth more. I did not want to find out. Boss, I keep telling you, I didn't lose your money. I just invested it. If you give me till the end of the month, I'll get it back in triple. If you off me tonight, you'll really be getting nothing, I said as coolly as someone who was strapped to a chair with a broken nose and broken set of fingers could speak. That massive man of pure intimidating muscles did not look moved by my offer. Even with all the pain I was in, I felt annoyed. Are you going to kill me or not? Torturing me isn't getting your money back, so just let me go or be done with it. I don't think he's worth the time. We should just feed him to that damn thing and be done with it, one of the grunts said, looking at me in disgust. 
What thing? I knew the boss. I made the foolish mistake of borrowing the money from like cats. Big cats. No one knew the number of illegal black market pets he owned. He liked them scattered throughout the country for safekeeping. Honestly, being eaten by a lion or a tiger was almost neat enough of a way to be killed. I almost didn't mind it. Almost. The boss looked over at the man who suggested it, then back at me, deciding on my word. Triple, I stammered out, but deep down, I knew what my future held. Yeah, I'm done with him. Bring that thing in. Make sure there isn't a mess left behind, the boss said, giving a wave and walking away, completely ignoring me, begging for him just to stay and listen. I was frantic, almost out of my mind in fear. I started talking to the two men who stayed behind, while the third went off to get whatever beast that was about to make me a nice dinner. Come on, don't do this. I was kidding about the money. If I can get this much in just a few days, think of how much more I can get in the future. You won't need to work for the boss anymore. Think about it, right? In a few months, you can retire somewhere nice and hot, and the girls are dirt cheap. Isn't that the best idea you ever heard? I kept chattering on, hoping that if I threw everything to the wall, something might just stick. When the other man came back dragging a creature on a chain, it shut me up. Nothing had ever shut me up in my entire life, but this did. I stared, body turned to ice, and mouth open in wide word at the monster that had been literally dragged into the light. It was double the size of a lion I expected to see, dark and strangely enough flickering. It walked on all fours, massive claws leaving deep tears in the solid concrete. The chains around its neck looked perfectly real and solid, but this thing kept going in and out of focus, like I was never meant to see it. As if those chains not only were dragging it along towards me, but also dragging it into our world. It fought hard against the chains that left a deep wound where they touched its skin. The beast let out a loud roar of protest, but that too sounded unreal and out of focus. It had a mane of dark fur that at some point must have been a proud feature of glossy black. Now it was just matted and dull. A sheet was over the top of its head, leaving only a snout of jagged teeth exposed. Seeing the countless scars etched into that poor thing's body, I felt as if we were both in the same boat, caught and tortured by these bastards. After seeing it, I was still afraid of whatever supernatural creature that had just been dragged in front of me. But I also felt sorry for it. I wanted to do something, anything to help it, even though I was not in the position to do so. Come on, you overrated mute, behave. We have a nice snack for you. Eat him, and you can go back to your cage, the man grunted, trying to drag the creature even closer. With a jerk of its head, the beast tore the chain from the man's hand for a few seconds. The other two ran in and helped him get the monster under control. It shrieked in protest, just wanting to be free of them. One peeled away to grab my chain from behind to drag me closer. The chair legs made a horrible sound across the ground like nails on a chalkboard. I tried making it difficult for him, but in the end, I couldn't do a damn thing as my chair was placed within reach of the dark monster. The monster stopped struggling when I got closer. It could smell my blood. I knew it. Its nose got right up close, nearly touching me as I felt hot puffs of air ruffle my hair. I expected it to smell horrible, but oddly enough, it smelled almost minty. It would only take one bite to end me. I really hoped that my head got taken first and not my legs to suffer through being eaten alive. Suddenly, the idea of being chomped down by some powerful animal didn't feel like a neat way to go after all. It just felt like the end. Drips of drool came from its mouth 
and dropped onto my jeans, soaking them through. It made my skin crawl. I tried backing up the chair, only to see a man was holding it in place. Come on now, eating. That's an order. The words made the monster tense. Before it just looked curious about me, but now it looked like a cat ready to pounce. It now had its orders and needed to obey them. I was hoping that wet feeling was because it drooled on me and not because I pissed myself seeing the sudden change. I was so out of mind in fear, I didn't even stop and think what the hell this thing was. A crushing force came down on each of my arms strapped to the chair as the beast placed his huge claws onto them to stand up. Those countless teeth just above my head and jaw opening ready to take one massive bite. In my last moments, I wanted to pray but couldn't find any kind thoughts in my head. I took a large inhale and waited for death to come. To my shock, I didn't get my head torn off. Instead, the monster turned that deadly set of teeth on the man holding me from behind. The dark fur covered my vision. I only guessed he had gotten his head bitten off instead of myself when screams of surprise and fear came from the other men. A flurry of motion started. The beast was dragged back, the claws digging into the flesh of my arms, leaving cuts, but also snapping the restraints keeping me down. My body moved before my mind did. My bleeding arm shot straight down, trying to get my legs free, as I kept darting my head up to see the other two men trying to get control of the monster. One pulled a gun from who knows where and started shooting. The monster took some hits, but darted away so the one holding the chains received some friendly fire. The man collapsed and the dark creature was free. It thrashed, slamming into the wooden boxes surrounding us, packing peanuts, coffee grounds, and what I guessed to be bundles of drugs poured out. I didn't really care. I just had to get the hell out of here. The straps on my leg felt nearly impossible to undo. Because of the noise, more people came rushing in, trying to first catch the monster. Soon they knew it wasn't possible and started to shoot at it. The entire scene was chaos and I was trapped in the middle of it. The gunshots going off was deafening. I'm sure the monster was making noise of its own, but I couldn't hear anything beyond the gunfire ringing in my ear. Men were getting ripped apart while they tried shooting the creature down. Wooden crates exploded into pieces, flying around almost as dangerous as the bullets. It was a miracle I wasn't shot when I was just sitting out in the open trying to get free. Another miracle happened when my legs got out of the straps and started to try and run off in the direction away from the bullets and the beast. My luck ended there. I started running on unsteady feet towards a tower of crates to hide behind. A man turned to the corner into the fight, knocking me over. He was middle-aged, white hair, and had no weapon. I was so pissed he kept me from escaping. I burned the image of his face into my mind as I fell. The beast came closer to me. It was only a few feet away, but that meant bullets in that direction. What came next made me feel like everything just froze. I was glued to the ground on my back, looking in the direction of the monster. The man with the white hair had his arm outstretched, a face of concern and worry at the monster, with his head turned to look at something that was just tossed towards it. I didn't hear the explosion from my ears, already being shot. I felt the shock wave that hit my head against the concrete floor so hard it knocked me out. There was no way to know how long I was out for. A few seconds or a few minutes. My ears rang and my body was stiff. I couldn't move, so I just tried looking around to see what just happened. Debris from the small explosion was scattered around. The overhead lights flickered, making it hard to see clearly. By how much my head hurt, I was thankful for the brief stints of darkness. In the small few seconds of lights, I saw the white-haired man go over to the creature carefully removing the chains. The monster looked as bad as I felt. Both back legs had been torn off. 
Countless injuries in bullet holes marked the dark fur. Even as I was on the ground, unable to move my body, and my head pounding, I felt bad for that thing. Whatever it was, it didn't feel right that it was harmed so badly and most likely going to die. Don't move. I'll do what I can. I was shocked. I heard the man's voice. I shouldn't have been able to hear anything so clearly after the gun battle and explosion. As much as I disliked him from knocking me over and causing me to get caught up in the shockwave, I had to admit, he sounded like a nice person. He sounded so worried as if he was talking to an old friend. Don't bother with me, my king. This was my mistake. Wash your hands of this. The monster spoke. Tears came to my eyes. I couldn't stop them. The terrifying yet injured creature almost sound like a hurt child trying to act brave. That man, he was talking like myself. Can you save him? That was strange. Was the beast talking about me? I tried sitting up to get a better look, but my body didn't move. The white hair man looked over in my direction. I could have sworn he clicked his tongue when he looked over at me. No. He should already be dead. Humans cannot heal from vast injuries like that, unlike you. If we could just get some high virgin blood or flesh to patch you up, then maybe... The man trailed off, sounding as if his hope for the dark creature living was fading when he saw just how badly it was hurt. I didn't want to think about what he'd just said to me, how I had less hope than the beast before me. Using every ounce of willpower I had, I looked down at myself, and he was right. I really should have been dead already. My legs twisted and broken, arm tore off, and chest full of bleeding ragged holes. How in the hell was I still awake? I tore my eyes away from my broken body and looked over at the two men in front of me. I really wasn't going to make it out alive but I could still do something. I tried speaking only to cough and nearly choke on my own blood. I couldn't speak. Maybe they could sense it, though, the embarrassing fact that after living a life of crime, I was still untouched in a sense. If they needed virgin blood, they could take mine. You can laugh at the idea of me being so old-fashioned, of saving myself for marriage, the thing I discovered about my life early on is almost everything is out of my control. I was never going to live an easy life born the way I was into the family I was raised in. No matter how hard I tried, my type never got anywhere in life. It was all beyond control. So I was so desperate trying to find things out about myself that was entirely up to my own decisions not sleeping around was one of them. If you want it, take it, I thought, hoping they could hear me the same way I could hear them. I felt cold. My eyelids were fluttering shut, no matter how hard I tried keeping them open. Damn, I wish I wasn't so damn cold at the end. That was it. I was going to die because I listened to my father's advice on life. He really never did leave me anything worthwhile, now did he? I let myself be overtaken by endless darkness, expecting to never wake up again. For some reason, I did wake up. I had to be dreaming. My body felt stiff, but whole. I didn't know where I was. I didn't recognize the room in the slightest. A hospital room would make sense. Not a high-end penthouse bedroom. I didn't move for the longest time, trying to understand what in the hell happened. Did I dream the entire thing? That must be it. There's no way I could have survived those injuries, and yet it felt too real to just be a dream. Sitting up in bed, I looked down to see I was dressed in a very silky and very expensive sleepwear. I could say for a year and still not be able to afford these. Lifting the shirt up, I inspected my body for scars or medical treatment. A lamp was on bedside, giving me enough light to see by. 
looking down, I didn't think this could happen. I didn't think this could be my body. I was never fat because I could never afford to eat. But I never had a six-pack before. All right, it may not have been a six-pack, but it was way more toned than what my skinny body was before. I stared at it, then noticed my nails, each long and pointed like those ugly things women pay to have. I had to see my face, just had to make sure I was still myself. Stumbling out of bed, I slowly made my way over to a bathroom on the other side of the vast, plush room. Flicking the light on, I gave myself a look over. My face looked the same, just healthy, as if I was getting the right amount of sleep and eating good meals. I've never looked like this. My hair was dyed a dark black instead of the mousy brown color I hated and my eyes looked more golden than brown that matched my hair in the past. Aside from the eye and hair color change, I looked about the same. A noise from inside the penthouse made me nearly scream. I jumped, crashing into the sink behind me. I couldn't find a weapon. Whatever was going on, I had to get the hell out of here. Someone else was here, and I didn't want to stay and find out who. Creeping along, the place felt like a castle. I shuddered to think of how much just renting it for a month would cost. Even with all my efforts going into not being spotted, a man I recognized came peeking out from the kitchen as I tried to make my way as far from this place as I could. Mason, I made you coffee. I can order some food. Go sit down. The white-haired man from before said to me, my knee-jerk reaction was to book it. The man knew my real name, not the false ones I've been using for years. I wanted to tell him to stuff it, and I was leaving. You really shouldn't have. My voice spoke, but I wasn't in control of it. Nor was I controlling my body when it obeyed the man and sat on the couch in the living room. On the inside, I was screaming all sorts of protests, trying to make myself move. But on the outside, I was acting like a good little boy, sitting and waiting. Finally, the man sat down, setting a tray with two cups, sugar and cream, in front of us on a small, polished wooden table. I could finally move, but needed answers. I stayed sitting. Who the hell are you, and what is going on? I asked, cracking from stress. Instead of being annoyed by my outburst, he just sat back onto the couch, looking cool and amused. I hated him that moment. I think you know the answer to the first question. He said with a smile that got on my nerves, Sir, I have no idea what you're talking about. Wait, sir? I never call people sir. Not unless I was busting out the sweet talk. I didn't like this man in the slightest, so why did I give him an ounce of respect? What year is it? He asked, and I frowned. Two thousand, I think. What does that have to do with anything? How does time fly? The last time Fex encountered me, I was much different. Went by a horrible name, too. It was a strange feeling. I somehow knew what he was talking about, and yet not at the same time. It was too damn frustrating. Lirin, like Glaren. That was your name before, but how would I know that if I don't know who you are? And who the hell is Fex? My head started to pound, as if it felt like facts were shifting, getting shuffled in my mind. Fex is the beast you allow to possess your body. That is how you know of me. He didn't move, only gave me another smile, trying to show off his handsome features while my body felt like it turned into ice. I shot up, suddenly feeling like something was behind me. What stared back at me was that creature in the warehouse. Instead of being on all fours, it stood like a human, sheet over its eyes, but still looking down at me all the same. It was fully recovered, looking like a terrible beast, and yet it held some kind of beauty that could make your lungs stop. I nearly fainted at the sight of it. 
instead, I collapsed back into the chair. Head between my knees as vague memories started to flood my brain. The man beside me I knew to be important, to be a king of some sort. The beast behind me loved that man and was completely loyal to him. I was about to die when that king asked me to give my body over to the beast. We would both live and benefit from the agreement. Wanting to keep living, I let them do what they wanted. Do you need a few minutes? No, I just... I just needed a straightforward answer, I said, not raising my head. All right, then. For who I am? I go by Silverman. I am the king of all the creatures of the dark. I was able to try and save Fex from those humans, and you saw how that turned out. Sadly enough, if rules are being followed, there isn't much I can do. They knew enough of Fex's true name to capture and control him. I wanted to do more. Rules are rules, though. Silverman sounded a bit distant and paused for a few seconds to collect himself. Fex was about to die. He could have just eaten you and lived, but this beast is far too kind on humans. Instead, he let you take him into yourself. In a way, now you are half demon. I suppose that's a term for it. You shall not age. It's nearly impossible to kill you because half-breeds do not have true names. They do not have the weaknesses and cannot be killed or controlled. Fex only wanted to kill the humans who captured him. Now that is done, he has nothing else to live for and gave up on himself so you may also live. I sat up, looking behind me, trying to see the monster that saved my life. He wasn't visible, but I felt like he was still there. He would always be there. Wait, when did he kill those people? And isn't there like a way to split us apart? Silverman gave my questions a wave of his hand, as if I should know these answers already. No, once you two are together... You shall always be one. Fex has the stronger will of the two of you, so he can take control of your body at any point. Like I said, he is kind. He took over, killed the ones who wronged you, and took you back into a comfort bed. You should have no memory of this, as if you were asleep, although it is possible to be aware of his accounts when he is in control. Fex forced you asleep because... He guessed you would not wish to see the humans dying by your own hands. I felt sick with each passing word. My hands shook, and I grasped them together, feeling as if they were no longer my own. I wanted to be angry at what happened, to have my body just taken from me like that. In the back of my mind, now I knew he was there. I felt Fex stress and worry about my reaction. Slowly, I forced all the tension out of my shoulders to accept what was being said. Yes, it was pretty alarming to hear my body was borrowed to commit murder, but Fex really did right by me, considering he could have left me to die. He only wanted this one thing. I should really just let him have it. Fex also relaxed wherever he was hiding in the back of my head. The whole thing was very very strange and needed time to get adjusted to, but it was much better than the alternative. Now the issue is, you're wanted for murder. Drink your coffee. What? I sputtered out. My body ached on its own. My body acted on its own. I now knew it was Fex taking over. He could not ignore any order from his king, so he took the mug and made me drink some. Fex did not have the forethought to cover up his crimes. After slaughtering an entire gang, you're on the top of a few lists. But because you are now under my care, you shall not be arrested. I arranged the new identity for you. This place is just a temporary place to rest your head and get caught up. You'll need to be on the move, but I assure you, you shall not be caught for those murders. I still felt a little sick just from how much information I needed to go through. 
murder wasn't right at all, but I thought about what they put Fex through. Yes, he was a monster, a creature that saved my life, and that's more than what I could say about the people he killed. I was sitting, trying to take everything in, when Silverman got my attention. Normally, he was the type of person I would never get along with. Handsome, and he knew it. A killer smile that could seduce anyone he wanted, and felt like he abused that power fairly often. But Fex liked him, and those feelings were rubbing off on me. I really didn't like giving this man any of my time. You see, you could just spend your new life traveling, but how boring do you think that would become? Wouldn't you like a job? Something important. I knew that kind of tone he was using. I'd used it most of my life. He was selling something, and the beast inside my mind was dead set on listening. Don't try selling me something. Just say it, I said, and Silverman let his mask drop a little. All right, I want to use you as a hitman. Sometimes there's only so much I can do, like with Fex. I should have been able to save him sooner, but my hands are tied in some situations. That would not apply to you because you're both human and not, and very hard to kill. You only needed to let Fex take over to do the work you cannot do and enjoy the reward of being paid so much money you won't know what to do with. You'll live the easiest life by pretty much just sleeping through very profitable work. Also, this won't just benefit creatures of the night. How many humans do you think Fex had to harm based on orders he could not refuse? Humans and these creatures should not mix. If you take my offer, you'll be doing a lot of good in this world. I sat and thought, suddenly wondering what the hell I'd gotten myself into. I was wearing silk sitting on a couch that could cost a fortune in a world so far removed from my own. Murder was horrible. Even when I was doing petty crimes, I swore I would never get to that point for money, and yet, it was a very good offer. I shouldn't turn my back on humans. Still, at the same time, my mind kept going back to the image of that dark creature and torn body. Against his will, he harmed people and fought against it. Fex killed the ones responsible so they could never do it again. The real beast were the ones who caught him in the first place. What made me slowly start to nod my head was the idea of there being more Fexes out there, more creatures being used by evil for profit and who knows what else. All right, I said with a final nod. I felt even more sure of my choice as the seconds passed. I'll take the job. Silverman was right. Time does fly. That night was so long ago. So many things have happened since. I do have more stories to tell based on what my job brought. But for now, just how I became what I am, some memories I don't want to bring back up just yet. Right now, I simply want to think about the worst yet best night of my life.